Hello, this is Aaron Mean of SG Game Info, and welcome to my video review of Fallout 4. Bethesda Studios Fallout 4 is without a doubt the most hyped game of the year. But does the latest game in the post apocalyptic franchise live up to the hype? The answer, in my opinion, is no. While I believe it doesn't live up to the hype, I don't mean to say that the game is bad. In fact, Fallout 4 is a great game that does miss us out on being excellent. So what is Fallout 4 and what is the game about? Fallout 4 is a post-apocalyptic RPG that allows you to experience the world 200 years after a nuclear war wiped out most life and left the planet looking like a barren wasteland. Your character, which you can be either male or female, experiences the pre-apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic world as the game opens with you and your family running to Vault 111 to escape the nuclear attacks. Inside the vault, you and its occupants are cryogenically frozen for 200 years, but during this time you are awoken while raiders break in, steal your infant child and kill your partner. When you are eventually fully thawed out, your only goal is to find your lost child and exact revenge on those who stole him. As plots go, Fallout 4 is straightforward, but in the end the plot does create an amazing and fun journey as the game story has you meeting, interacting with and joining various post-apocalyptic factions. These interactions help shape your idea of the wasteland, with characters talking about secret advanced societies that act without restraint, and learning the secrets of the wasteland through side quests help create your own ideas of the societies that inhabit it. For example, the Brotherhood of Steel, a faction that covets pre-war technology, looks down on other factions that strive to survive the harsh nuclear wasteland. If you're looking at Fallout 4 just through the main story, you can be easily left disappointed, but the factions, characters and side quests you receive help elevate the main story and the world around you. If you're planning on playing Fallout 4, I highly recommend performing side quests and other side activities, as these interactions will help you with some morally tough decisions. Since you can play as either a man or a woman, you may be wondering what the game's character creation is like. Well, it is limited to only altering the character's face. While it is limited to this, the alterations are pretty in-depth, as you can heavily customise the character's look by simply selecting a part of his or her face and scaling the selected portions to your heart content. If you want to create a truly unique character, Fallout 4 offers the right tools for the job. Like any good RPG, Fallout 4 has a number of stats and perks that help your character feel as unique as possible. In Fallout 4, the perk system is known as Special, with each letter representing one of the game's seven main stats. When leveling up, you can choose to put points into the main stats or use them on perks, which can be unlocked by reaching a specific level or main stat. These perks, along with the main stats, help create a unique form of gameplay, with perks and stats allowing you to specialise in certain fields. For example, if you aren't a type of person to run and gun, you can use the stats and perks to improve your sneak ability and increase your lock picking and hacking skills. Speaking of combat, it is very similar to previous Fallout titles. Most combat is done at range with the various firearms you find in the game. However, if you aren't overly confident in your shooting ability, you can use the VATS targeting system to slow down the fast paced shooting to a more tactical form of combat as you have access to a more precise form of aiming with the ability to target limbs more easily. But there is a trade-off as the amount of times you can activate this system is limited to the amount of AP you possess at the time. While fighting is usually about shooting or punching, there are other ways to win a fight. In Fallout 4 you can talk your way out of battle and win confrontations by using your charisma to talk enemies into giving up or gaining new information. The conversation addition to combat and dialogue is a fascinating addition, but to fully utilise it, you must be very focused on levelling your charisma stats. Speaking of dialogue, what are conversations like in Fallout 4? Well, in terms of presentation, they are an improvement over past Fallout games, as Fallout 4 is fully voiced. But this change limits it, as I was constantly left feeling that dialogue had to be trimmed down and additional ways of talking were reduced or removed. There was also other noticeable issues I have with the dialogue, and that is how the charisma focused additional dialogue worked. The issue at hand was the use of a colour scheme to denote your chance of success, with yellow being the easiest and red being the most difficult. But these colours didn't give a clear indication because at times I found myself being successful with a red colour while still failing with an orange difficulty colour. I would have personally preferred to have a percentage chance beside the choice, with or without the colours included. Now if you've been following the game in any form before release, you would have learned that your character has a companion in the form of a dog called Dogmeat. 
Dogmeat is one of a number of companions that can join you in your wasteland adventure, with each companion having their own unique traits. For example, Dogmeat can pick up items and bring them to you, and the detective Nick Valentine can hack computers for you. Companions are great as they help level in the playing field when combat gets tough. Moving away from the plot, stats, dialogue and companions, what else does the game offer? Well, like every RPG, you have crafting. Crafting in Fallout 4 is divided into six sections. Workshop, armor, chemistry, cooking, power armor and weapons. Disregarding workshop for the moment, what can you do with the crafting? Well, armor and weapons allow you to improve and customize your armor and weapons, with the weapon crafting being the most obvious with the customization. For example, you can turn a simple 10mm pistol into the likes of a sharpshooter's light 10mm pistol, which offers better recoil and hip accuracy against its original 10mm pistol version. Other than weapons, cooking and chemistry is also important as cooking allows you to make non-radioactive food, which means there's less of a need to worry about a piece of food lowering your overall HP while still healing lost health. And chemistry allows you to make temporary stat boosting items. To make crafting viable, you have to scavenge the wasteland for parts, which means you may want to pick up every little item you run into. This idea of every item you run into being potentially valuable is a double-edged sword, as there is a limit to the amount of items you can carry at once because once you begin to carry too much, you will become encumbered and unable to run or even fast travel. Crafting also relies on your perks, as some of the more powerful crafting modifications for weapon and armor are locked behind one or even two perks. Outside of combat and completing quests, the game allows you to build settlements. Settlement building is a side activity that turns the game into something akin to Minecraft, as you use all the items you find to create items such as walls, beds and crafting tables, etc. with the settlements workshop. The game features numerous settlements which can be unlocked by completing quests for the Minuteman faction in the game. Settlement maintenance is very much a side activity that offers very little apart from the enjoyment of finding a use for all the items that littered the world. I never found myself really engaged with the activity, and don't worry, the settlements that you liberate and help don't seem to care that you don't engage with them, because if a settlement is attacked and you decide to do nothing, there doesn't appear to be any noticeable consequences. Now that I've done talking about Fallout 4's gameplay elements, is there any issues or bugs? The answer to that is a resounding yes. On the PlayStation 4 version of the game, I've had Fallout 4 crash at least once, drop frame rates to the point where it becomes nearly impossible to play for several seconds, clipping, and my personal favourite so far, having the game freeze and my character getting shot up into the air so high the ground texture disappears and then after several seconds being dropped down to earth with a bang. If you don't like running into issues or bugs, I would highly advise holding off on the game until Bethesda fixes the numerous issues. In terms of graphics, Fallout 4 has well modelled character and an art style that offers some vibrant colours in what could have easily been a washed out colourless environment. The audio for the most part is impressive, but I feel Bethesda put too much emphasis on it, as the fully voiced setup took away from the game's dialogue. But on the other hand, the dialogue helps liven up the atmosphere of the game. And now for my conclusion. Fallout 4 suffers from a weak plot that is well covered by a well fleshed out world and numerous side activities. However, Fallout 4 is riddled with major frame rate issues and bugs that range from annoying to game breaking. And so with that in mind, I give Fallout 4 a score of 8 out of 10. With the game's pros being, side activities that help flesh out the world, the ability to modify your weapons, and the characters that inhabit the wastelands. The game's cons are the fact that settlement building is boring and the numerous bugs that include crashing and frame rate issues. Thank you for watching. Please like, favorite and subscribe. For I'm more gaming, gaming information, info. please visit sgaminginfo.com and don't forget to like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash sgaminginfo and please follow us on Twitter at sgaminginfo.